I'll stop. You said this here in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48 goes back to 1 John. Yep. Now, how does that go back to 1 John when this was written before 1 John? I'm just asking. The royal, the royal law is the heart of the Mosaic law. So is the Mosaic law. So what no. we're reading in verse 48 is the heart of the Mosaic law. Yes or no? This is the heart of the Mosaic law. Yes. Okay. 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 So where do we find the heart of the Mosaic law in, in the, the Mosaic Bible. law or the Bible? Where do we find it? Uh, in the, you find the heart of the Mosaic law right where it is in Jesus. So that's Jesus, not, that's not what hold I, on, hold on. This is he because he playing. So I'm just asking. I'm not playing, man. I'm not teach, playing. Hold on. Did Jesus people, uh, did Jesus teach people to keep his law that he gave to Moses? Um, sort of. He. Hold on. Oh, hold he, on. Is it yes or no? I'm. I'm gonna say he taught them to give up everything and follow him. But did he teach the law that he gave to Moses to people? Did he teach that? He asked them questions. Bro, hold on. Bro. You just said that in Matthew 5, Christ is teaching people the law. And then you double down and said it's the heart of the law. So he's teaching people the law. He, he, he no, just, no, no, no. He's teaching it. people. He's teaching people his law. We, we gonna, Dan, you Daniel, Psalms. Daniel, I just want to let you know you, you winging this, ain't you? This is Psalms, what, 19? No, I'm not, man. No, I'm not. I think I think you misunderstand. I think I think what happens. No, no, listen to me. I think what happens is you don't understand that. I know that when, yeah, you, see, you, when can't, you, I know. you can't it's make good. statements like that. Okay, well, can I ask you a question? Where does uh, where does Paul get his learning from? Where does he get his breakdowns from? Jesus Christ. Is that what Paul says? Yeah, he was with Jesus for, what, three years in the desert? I beg your pardon? I beg your pardon. To our home. What to do now? This big yank wild on the job and Kawhi on the track. Stepping, we running it back. I just might run up a rack. Pushing the P. Prophecy coming in packs. Put Space City on the map. Don't keep the law. Nigga, don't give me no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't keep the law. Nigga, don't give me no doubt. Shout out to my brother. Salute. It's a car recruiting. You might want to get with the movement. Having this motion, we drip like the ocean. And step on the heathen whenever we do it. Know that I'm blessed, he always drinking and making a mess. Sorry about that. You feel like, okay, so back to my question. Yeah. So the reason why we went to uh what being born again and how that's not sin is because we see that Christ tells us that we got to hear to all the words that come out of the mouth of God. All the words that come in the mouth of God is including the Torah. The Torah is the law. So when you read first no. John 3 and 4, and it says that. When you transgress that law, that is sin. It, it, it makes no sense, sir. And now you're sitting here telling me that we don't have to adhere to all the words of God. So you, basically what you're saying is you don't agree with Matthew 4 and 4. So Matthew 4 and 4, he's talking to the devil. And then in mm -hmm. Matthew 5, he says, I have not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. Right. Uh -huh. Anybody that What's breaks that? the least. And anybody that breaks the least of these commandments, and then he tells you what commandments he's going to tell you. And he leaves yeah. out two things. Listen, he leaves out food laws and he leaves out day laws. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. In Matthew 5, he doesn't even like go into no laws. He's giving a sermon on how this, to this, keep the law. These are the, these are the laws. that He's doing exactly what Moses did on Mount Sinai. He's given the he's, law. He's, no, he's giving a sermon on how to keep the law. That is the whole point. He's showing you what the law means when it's written on your heart when the new covenant comes Correct. into effect. And those in and and that law is what, though? That law is the royal law. Okay, so in, Ma in Matthew and, and, and Matthew he 5, leaves. hold on, since you ran away from Matthew 4 and we in Matthew 5, in Matthew 5 and 48, it says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father would, which is in heaven is, is perfect. How does one become perfect? By living by the Spirit, letting the Holy living Spirit the live through you. Okay, so the the Holy the Spirit is whatever Christ tells us to do, right? Yeah. Yep. So Christ told us to keep the law in Matthew five, correct? 
No, he's telling you that he's not come to destroy the law or the prophets, but to fulfill them. And then he tells you what commandments you're to keep. But this no, is no, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Now, you just said he tells you what commandments to keep. One of the commandments he's telling you to keep is to be there, be you therefore perfect. Is that a mosaic? That's, why he's, asking, he... that's why he's asking you, what, what, how do you do that? Because Christ is telling right. you to be perfect. How do you do that? This is. This is the heart of this is the heart of the law. He's telling you, do, do you still do you lust for a woman? For my wife, hell yeah. For my wife, yeah. What you mean? That's not lust. That is lust. Lust in the Hebrew literally like, means just to want. So if 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 I just want to I just want to get your your thought right. Do you get do you get do you get angry? I'm at work and 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 I start thinking about my woman. And I say, I can't wait till I get home so that, you know, I can lay down with her. Is that not lust? That's, your, start... that's your, no, that's, that's your woman. Exactly. That's not, that's not, that's not lusting adultery. After lusting after her. The, the minute, it says, if you look at another woman to lust after her. What about your woman what to about lust your after woman, her? He, Jesus didn't say that. Exactly. So, so I can lust. So I can, I can lust. Not, at, what I'm saying is. What I'm saying is Jesus' law goes far beyond Mosaic no, law. That, not lusting for another man's wife is in the Mosaic That's in law. The Mosaic law. You can't lust for another man's wife. Right. It's it's the yeah, you're right. right. Yeah, you're right. So, and so and so those, you're agreeing, those, hold on, hold on. So you're agreeing that Christ taught a Mosaic law. Well, he so Jesus no, did, did, did hold on, hold on. Did Christ teach a Mosaic law when he said that? Jesus spoke with Moses face to face. And gave him the law. So, gee, the so the law. Hold on. So the law that we got on Mount Sinai is the laws of Christ. No, that's the Mosaic law for them for that covenant oh, for the first on, covenant. Sir, sir you talk. You talking in a circle. You just told me yeah, that Jesus but, yeah. gave Moses the law, correct? He did. Yeah. Oh, that law came from Jesus, right? Would you Would you agree that Jesus is Jehovah? I mean, that's what you agree to. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna follow you. So Jesus gave Moses the law, correct? Jesus gave Moses the law. Yeah. So the law from Mount Sinai is the law of Christ. Do you understand that these are things are types and shadows, though? No, I need you to answer that. Well, well, hold on, hold on. Oh, you gotta answer hold that. Bro. Let me, let me. Oh. We're gonna get, we're gonna get back to, to a uh, uh, root because we're, we're off the topic. You're right? off the topic because. But, but for me, because you know, and I'll, I'll take the blame. I'm, I'm the reason why we're here, right? But Matthew five and forty eight, Christ is saying, "Be you therefore perfect." And you said Christ is teaching the Mosaic laws that we need to keep. You just said that. So where and how? Well, I'm I'm not saying that. I'm saying that in the Old Testament, Christ gave the law to Moses, and oh, in okay. the New I'm Testament, off I'm off that. In Matthew five, you said that these are laws that He's telling us what we need to keep. That's what you he's said. He's telling us. Yeah, he's Let's telling continue. us to be perfect. Right, but you but you said this is part of the list of laws that Christ is giving us in Matthew 5. Yeah, yeah exactly, because so he what says... Law, what law can we see that tells us to be perfect? He says, he says, whosoever breaks the least of these commandments, and then he okay. tells you what commandments. Right, so how, these how do commandments. I teach and teach... Verse 48 to be perfect. And, uh, yeah. How do I so these, how do I do it and how do I teach it? Where do these, I find yeah. it in the Bible? Uh I would suggest listen to Christ. No, I don't I don't want to hear what you say. What does the Bible say about how you be perfect? That's why Christ is telling us, be you therefore perfect. Do you know? How do I know how to be perfect? No, do you know? According do I know to how to Bible, be perfect. According to the laws of God. It's okay if you don't. According to the royal law, I do know how to be perfect. You do? You do? According to the royal law, I do know how to be perfect. The royal law? Is that is that what Christ is talking about right here in Matthew 5 and 48? It's royal yeah, law. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, you just told us earlier these are part of the Mosaic laws that we got to keep. So now the royal law is the Mosaic law. No, the royal, the royal law is the heart of the Mosaic law. So it's the Mosaic law. So what no. we're reading in verse 48 is the heart of the Mosaic law. Yes or no? 
This is the heart of the Mosaic law. Yes. Okay. okay. So okay. where do we find the heart of the Mosaic law in, in the, the Mosaic law or the Bible? Where do we find it? In the, you find the heart of the Mosaic law right where it is in Jesus. So that's Jesus, not, that's not what hold I, on, hold on. This is he because he's playing. So I'm just asking. I'm not playing, man. Jesus I'm not teach, playing. Hold on. Did Jesus people? Uh, did Jesus teach people to keep his law that he gave to Moses? Um, sort of. He. Hold on. Oh, hold he, on. Is it yes or no? I'm. I'm gonna say he taught them to give up everything and follow him. But did he teach the law that he gave to Moses to people? Did he teach that? He asked them questions. Bro, hold on. Bro. You just said that in Matthew 5, Christ is teaching people the law. And then you doubled down and said it's the heart of the law. So he's teaching people the law. He, he, he no, just, no, no, no. He's said teaching it. people. He's teaching people his law. No, that's not what you just that's said. That's not what you said. Now, did you misspeak? I think I did, yeah. Okay. 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 All right. He misspoke. We'll earlier. give you that. We'll so this is that. not the heart of the Mosaic law. Well, the... His law, his royal law, is so you have Not you have the, the Ten Commandments, Moses. right? You gotta hear me out. The okay. first, the the first commandments uh -huh. point point towards God, and the and it's a heart issue. It says, "Thou shalt not um, have any false gods," right? And the last, the last commandments are about your heart as well. Thou shalt not covet. Hold on, just, just hold on. Uh huh. What about what about verse forty eight? Be that, therefore perfect. So, what, what about so that, verse forty eight? So that goes back to First uh, John three. No, uh, now pause. No, now no, stop. Now stop. You said this here in Matthew chapter five and verse forty eight goes back to First John. Yep. Now, how does that go back to First John when this was written before First John? Got him. We fucking got him. <laughs> I'm just asking. And then, I, uh, and then I want you to I want you to know, Daniel. I'm giving you. I'm just we, we we helping you out. You told us that in First John that they isn't talking about the Mosaic Law, but then you just told us that Christ gave that law to Moses. Well, no, no. And that's he, the royal he, law. He misspoke when he said Okay, that. okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, throw all what we he throw said that earlier away. out we'll throw the that, we'll this, throw is, that away. this is now the, uh, the, the what you said, the core? The core? The core laws? The, 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 this is the royal law. Right the royal, here. yeah, let me write. This is the royal law. Hey, so Daniel, so Daniel. where do we where do we find verse 48, though? Yeah, what do we find? You, find, you go back to you go back to First John. I mean, you could read the whole book of James. Now, you go back man. to First John. Now here's here's what we about to do, okay? Because when Christ said this, there was no First John. Do you agree to that? Do you agree there was no First John when Christ spoke this? Yeah, was you're there, you're was, asking was, me was, what it was, means. Was there, so, quick. was there any Paul's letters, Peter's letter, James' letter? Was any of those letters written when 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 Christ was on the scene? Uh, I'm not dumb. Mean? I know. Uh, um, now. I'm telling you, I'm telling you what this means oh, is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you be perfect? Can you be perfect? You, you can. So can you can you be perfect? So that means you'll never sin, right? You, you, you can. Does the Bible say that you can be perfect? So before, first before, John, before Matthew, no, before the New Testament, does the Bible say that you for you perfect. to be perfect and you can be perfect like Christ is saying in Matthew 5 and 48? In the prophets and the songs, um, I, I believe it does, yeah. Um, but Christ is the only sinless one, Christ is the only one that never sinned, sir. Now, 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 I'm dealing with how do you be perfect? I'm, I'm saying you're be perfect, you're. So this Your is a commandment man. of Christ, like you, like you mentioned. We're here because you said you the commandments of Christ. One of the commandments of Christ is be you therefore perfect. And I see in the law and the prophets and the songs how to be perfect, like Christ is commanding me to. We're going to get, get, get. I'm already uh, here. Hold on, because we're going to read. We're going to, we, 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 we going to. Daniel, I just want to let you know, you, you winging this, ain't you? This is Psalms, what, 19? No, I'm not, man. 
No, I'm not. I think I think you misunderstand. I think I think what happens. No, no, listen to me. I think what happens is you don't understand that. I know that when you can't make statements like that. It's good. Dang, hold on. Can we read? We're gonna read Matthew uh, Psalms 19 and 7. This is Matthew. I mean, this is Psalms type 19 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. It says, "The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple." So the way that we see it to be perfect is by obeying the laws of the Lord, correct? Obeying Jesus Christ. I, so Christ we're talking about something totally different. You're saying no. What, what I what no. I believe is that the laws, the no, laws, let them talk. the mo. The, what I believe is that the Mosaic law was nailed to the cross, like yeah, Colossians I'm says. Mm -hmm. The ordinances thereof, and I believe that following Jesus' commandments, what he said to do, keeps you in that royal law. Uh-huh. So, so when the law says that to be perfect, you follow the law, statutes, and commandments, that was an ordinance that was done away. I know. I'm saying that's what Jesus told us to do, to be perfect. So, so Jesus. Wait, 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 wait. Because you just said that the ordinances of the Mosaic law was nailed to the cross is being perfect an ordinance of the mosaic law that was nailed to the cross and then when being christ perfect, came he be, gave don't put, word, don't put words in my mouth no being no that's perfect, why i'm asking that's why i'm asking you being perfect is following christ okay now now so when christ in matthew 5 when he said be you therefore perfect what he meant to say was follow me Yes. Or is that what he's saying? Follow me. Yes. When he says be perfect. Yep. Okay. Now, he just read Psalms 19. I'm going to read 1 Kings 8 and 61 to let you know why we believe Christ was teaching for you to keep the Mosaic law, to keep the laws of God when he said, be you therefore perfect. We read in Psalms 19. This is 1 Kings 8 and 61 from King Solomon. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as it is this day. You obviously don't agree with that scripture as far as now. Back then it applied. It don't agree. It doesn't apply now. Is that your position? I'm what That's what I'm you, saying. I really want to get off this topic because it's not the topic of the discussion. Right. Yeah. So what I'm really saying is fine. What, what I'm saying is that what Moses gave to his people or the ordinances and commandments. I'm not saying that every single ordinance and commandment is done away with. I'm saying the ones that Jesus reiterated yes. are the ones that we keep. Colossians 2 and 14. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I'm, so I'm saying, yes, this one is still part of what <laughs> I believe to do. Right. You believe in this scripture right here, Colossians 2 and 14. Right. As to why you say uh, the ordinances of the Mosaic Law is done away with, or some of them? Yeah, you, you, something interesting I want to share with you. Well, well now, Can I share? now, after this, I just want you to know, after yep. this scripture, we're going back to who Christ died for. Sweet. Yeah. And, and, and after this, after. Uh huh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. After this scripture. There's something in, really interesting I want to share with you about this scripture. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about this scripture. We're gonna get back on who Christ died for because I want I want to read Isaiah 53. I, I really want to get your understanding of that, and then yep. uh, you know after that, you know we could uh, agree disagree. <laughs> in, in a sense. But I will say while while we kind of got a little intermission, Daniel, um, you know I do appreciate you because a lot of people. You know, you know, they, they they like to talk in the comments and most people don't, you know, actually, you know, defend the gospel. And most people don't actually actually want to have a build or a reason. So I just want to say, despite our differences and despite what we may believe, you know, in ideology, man to man, I just want to appreciate you from coming on, you know, and uh, having actually, having the fortitude to actually come and state your position. You know, I, I, I do appreciate that. And I want to, you know, man to man, I want to let you know that. Bro, I will walk with you two miles, man. Three miles, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so this Colossians two and fourteen says, "Blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, 
which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Before we talk about it, what did you want to point out about this verse? All right. Um, how many commandments were there? It's roughly the 600. Uh, roughly 613. 613. What is it? Roughly 600. 613, right? Uh, more or less. Okay. 613. Um, when Pilate said, you know, when Pilate said, what, ha what I have written, I have written. You remember that? Uh -huh. he, he said in the Greek, gegrapho, gegrapho. Gegrapho adds up to 613. He's talking about the, the thing, the thing that he nailed above Jesus. Numerically, in Greek, that's 613. And another interesting thing is that John 19, no, John 20, sorry, has exactly 613 words in the original. That's the only book in the, that's the only chapter in the Bible with 613 words. I, I just, I don't know if it means anything. It's just an interesting thing to me. Hey, I got a who, We appreciate that. We appreciate who, who, uh, who taught you that, man? I just, I'm just curious. How you know that? How you know all that? You went um, to there, college school or something? Um, what's up? Like, how you know? Like, your mentor told you you went to theology school. Like, I'm just curious. That that's not uh, uh, just regular common information. I'm I'm just curious. How do you know? How you know that? Hey, Isla, can you grab Moses from from the from behind the door over here? Because my table's in the way. How do I how do I know that? Yeah. Um how did you how did you, how did you come a, that information? I'm I'm curious. There's a guy, he's got a ministry where he um he's out of the UK or maybe Australia. Yeah. It's called it's called the living word dot org. Mm. And mm. he has a ton of information like that about mm. just different things in the Bible that are unique and um just interesting like that. That Quick kind question. of like, is he is he uh what you would what you would call melanated? I don't know. You don't know if he's melanated, but you take his teachings. You never seen the man before. I'm just curious. I'm just I'm just. Curious. I've I've never seen him. No, no, I don't know. Okay, you learn from someone you've never seen. That's and another and another guy um <laughs> that I got that information was from was a guy named. Uh, Sandy Armstrong, actually. Mm. Yeah. Okay. He is quite yeah. melanated, actually. Oh, okay. So, I don't know, maybe you guys would uh, think his we'll stuff is interesting. Out. We'll, check, we'll check him out. We'll check him out. Sandy, and, and, and one, last, one last before we... Uh... Sandy Armstrong, his ministry is called Soldiers for Christ. Right, right, right. Okay. Got well, a Long we'll, Beach, we'll, California. We'll dive back into uh, Colossians 2 and 14. You know, just a little, just a little mental break for everybody. Um I don't know, man. I'm, I'm looking at your name, you know, and I'm, I'm hearing everything. Are you Jewish? No. 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 Okay. You just like 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 Bible stuff or Bible names. Uh, that's the well, Daniel Benjamin. You know, that's your your name on your. That that's that's my name. That's my given name. Oh, I don't really? know what my new. I don't know what my new name's gonna be. <laughs> oh man, yeah. What would your new name be? I wonder. What is, uh matter of fact before we even get that what is your is your is your is your father a white man? That's beside the point. Okay, we'll leave it alone. Well, we just we just we, we just we, we, we just we, talking shop, man. You know, we need like a, a you know how to in, mute, in movies that got comedic relief. You know, just kind of just a relief. I know. We, so, 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 to kind of answer it. your question a little bit, uh, -huh. he's Irish. Okay, okay, okay. you know, okay. Yeah, yeah. But and can I we show you something if... interesting? So let's we can get back to uh What's that? can we show you something interesting? Yeah, we can get back, we can get back to it. We, we would like break. to show you something interesting with uh Colossians 2 and 14. Right. So okay. uh, hey, this isn't gonna be one of those um we're gonna we're not gonna believe the blue letter, but we are gonna believe the blue letter. It's gonna be one of them situations, Daniel. 
I want to see what the text says. I don't, I'm just, uh, before, just to get your, just to get what the scholars interject about what they, what they write about the letters is different from the letters themselves. That's fine. That's fine. But what we see with this word right here, this is talking about when it says that, uh, when it's talking about the, uh, the ordinances, it's talking about the rules and reg uh, requirements of the Mosaic law carried out, suggesting of se uh, severity and of threatening judgment. So the scholars are saying when it says that he came and he nailed the ordinances on the cross, he's talking about the punishment of the law. So like if somebody is a idolater, Christ came and died. So now that person doesn't have to get put to death. He can now come back and just repent. That is what it means when he said he nailed the ordinances to the cross. Yeah, that's that's why we that's why we feel because when we go into the Greek ordinances is just talking about the punishment. So we don't feel as if uh, when it says Christ blotted out the ordinances of the law, we don't feel as if that is actual laws such as you you shall not kill or you, you know keep a beard on your face. We believe that is the penalty such as you commit adultery, you deserve to be stoned, you miss the Passover, or uncircumcised, you're cut off from the congregation. That's right. what we do those ordinances. Now, we're, now we're, we're, we are all we are all wait, Barabbas. Wait, Daniel, because I understand you you disagree with everything we just said. I understand. But no, I'm, I I agree wait. that that that's what you believe. We are all Barabbas. Right. Now now before you before you continue on this subject, the original subject is who is the atonement or the death of Christ for? And we diverted into talking about the law. We got your take on what you want to say about Colossians 2 and 14. We said our piece about Colossians 2 and 14. You disagree. We disagree. We can just leave that on the table and let's go back to who Christ died for. Can we do that? Can okay. we do that, Daniel? Yeah. yeah. All, right. All right. So so I know you want to go into Isaiah 53, right? Oh. I really want to stay. In, can we get Hebrews nine and fifteen? Oh well, let's stay in the New Testament. Let's let's do let's do what he's comfortable with. All right. So, what is your understanding? I'm comfortable with the old as well, man. Okay, we we'll, we'll hold you to it. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll go to we'll save Isaiah uh, uh, fifty three at the end. That'd be the last thing we talk about today. All right. You 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 gotta let me get some verses into though. Okay. Well, this whole time you've been we've been letting you get verses. Man. But how about this? How about this? We'll talk about Hebrews nine and fifteen. You talk about what you want to talk about, and then we're gonna end everything off on Isaiah uh 53. Because I know and yeah, and and I with two scriptures that we want clarification. Yeah, 54 too. Well, well, okay. Well, we're gonna talk about Isaiah 53, 54, and 59. It's the last things we're gonna talk about. So after this, cool. you want to go to Isaiah 54? Um, no, I'm saying that. I'm saying that you 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 guys are gonna do some scriptures at the end, right? With no, well, so so to be honest with you, you know what I'm saying we're approaching two hours, so I'm trying to start to approach the conclusion, and so I'm telling you the next topics that we want to talk about or get your understanding on is two things from Isaiah the, the 53rd chapter and Isaiah the 59th chapter. So and uh, that's can we go to we need yeah, to yeah, go to Isaiah 54 as well. If you're okay, gonna go to Isaiah okay. So after after this Hebrews nine, we'll go to Isaiah 54, and then we'll talk about Isaiah 53, and then Isaiah the last verse in Isaiah 59 is just it it ties in. That's the, these are the last two things we we'll talk about, you know. And then after that, I got I got you see that? Yeah, I see that. I got all these scriptures right here. Uh huh. Uh huh. That we haven't touched. Oh, I mean we can. If you want, we could we could we could we could talk another day. You know, I just don't want a for us to be talking for four or five hours when we have an yeah. original topic. When the original topic is atonement for Christ, if you want to talk about something else yeah, another we day, we can. We can, but we talking about the atonement for Christ today. And I definitely want to go to Isaiah. And I got all these pages too. That's that's, that's I, got, stuff, I got a bunch of stuff, man. And we can. And, and we, we didn't even, we didn't even touch we didn't even touch the lost sheep because that's really what. That's really what this is about. Okay, okay. Well, well, we can we can do that, but before we try to see who the lost sheep for, Christ died for the lost sheep. So we're already talking about who he died for. Now, if you want to make a I, un I understand, I under sheep, we can do that. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I'm going to tell you who the lost sheep are when we get there. 
Okay. Right. But it seems based like on, that's based, based Daniel, on Matthew Daniel, it seems 15. like that conversation is gonna have to be for another day. It's you know? it's a huge topic. It is a huge topic, which is gonna require a lot of time. And so far we're approaching two hours. <laughs> so I want I want to go ahead, man. And then we just set something up. All right. Go ahead. Yep. All right. So this is Hebrews 9 and 15. And it says, and for this cause, he talking about Christ is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, that they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. I love that you brought this up. So the question is, who were the people that was under the first testament? So um, the first testament is the Israelites. And it says in Hebrews 9, 16, for where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Mm -hmm. So this is saying that Christ died for the Israelites, correct? No, this is saying that this is no. saying that he is the testator. No, 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 sir. Verse 15, it says, and for this cause, he is the media of the New Testament that by means of death, for the redemptions of the transgressions that were under the first testament. So he died for those that was under transgression under the first testament. So you just said that the people that was under the first testament that transgressed were the Israelites. So basically you're agreeing that Christ died for the Israelites. So his testament is his will, right? It's what he wants. No, it's his, his, the first the first testament is the Mosaic law. Do you know what do you know what a testator does? A testator? Uh, yeah, a testator. That's what it says he, in verse 16. It, it, it's talking about a testator, but I'm not you're getting off topic. I asked you a specific question. What what does it mean that he died for the transgressions for them that was under the first testament? He died for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. Who transgressed? Who transgressed the first testament? Um, anybody under the law? Anybody? I think, so, I think we already covered this. No, you said. But what, what I'm saying is that there's a new testament. So who who was under the law? There's a new testament. I'm, I understand that, sir, but. This is talking about he died for the transgressions of the first testament. And then you said that's those that were under the law. So who are those that were under the law? He died for he died for the trans for the redemption of the transgression, the transgressions that were under, under the first what? testament. Who was under the first testament? Just be honest with us, David. Who was under the first testament? Who was under it? So, yeah, the, the Israelites, and I'm going to go. So, okay. what so, this is saying. So Christ died for their transgressions. He did die for their transgressions. So, that's who he died for, to redeem them. Yeah, but not only them. But it don't. But that's what it says. It's only talking about the people mm -hmm. that were Yeah, but, he, but he, has a, he, he has a will. He has another. A testator has another will, has a will. Huh? A testator has a will that when they die, their inheritors, their inheritance is given yeah, to somebody. And it says, and, and I, okay, cool. And it says that which are called might receive the promise of the internal inheritance. That's, that's right. The people that's getting this internal in inheritance are the one that transgressed the first testament, correct? Did did you transgress the first testament? Did I transgress it? Yeah, my, my forefathers did, yeah. Okay. So we're agreeing that that inheritance is for those that was under the first testament, correct? What I what I'm saying is that he died for all of us. I understand what you're saying, but what is Hebrews nine and fifteen saying? It's saying it's also because I want you to know it's also agreeing with Galatians four and four that we brought out in the beginning. Galatians four and four through five. So you're agreeing that the author of Hebrews and Paul are saying that Christ came and died for the Israelites. What happened when Jesus died? What you mean what happened? What happened? What you, what you mean he, he after he died he rose? 
his his New Testament comes into effect. That that's fine, but we're not talking about that right now. Who did the question is who did he die for? It's saying that he died for them that was under the first testament. He died for their transgressions to redeem. He died them. for them and and those that and those that are under the new. It don't say nothing about the new. Yeah, well, that's what it, that's what that testator does when he dies. His will comes into effect. It, it comes into and, effect, but that's not what this is saying. That's cool that you're saying the testator's will comes into effect, mm. but that's just saying that he. We're on the topic of who he died for. That's that's cool. He, I'm glad you put that in there. So, but I just want to get a clarification. This is talking about that he died for the Israelites, correct? In this verse, I can see where you could get that. So this is not talking about the Israelites. In, in this verse, I can see where you're coming from. But in the next verse, I can definitely see when the death of the testator happens, that's the death of the husband. <laughs> God damn it! You can't make this shit up! And Israel is free to marry whom she will. She can she can marry whoever. That's what 1 Corinthians 7 is about. That's what Romans 7 is about. So who does she Israel can, marry? Who does it... In prophecy, in the end, who does Israel end up marrying again? Again, yeah, but she, but so, like, so, 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 hold on, hold on. You just told us that Israel is free to marry whoever they want to, but it's prophesied yep. that they're going to marry God again, right? The true Israel will marry God again. So, so then you can just go ahead and wipe that off the table about that. So again, we're just going to conclude that this says that Christ died for the Israelites, correct? I'm gonna say that's that's part of it. Yeah, that's part okay. of it. That's okay. what you believe. That's fine. That's, that's fine. Uh, he wanted Isaiah 54. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Get that. You got. It. Uh, any specific verse in Isaiah 54? Because I got a, I got a question about Isaiah the 54. Fertility of Zion. Wow. Let's go to um. Great title. Verse seven and verse seven and eight. All right. So this is Isaiah chapter fifty-four and verse seven. For a small moment have I forsaken you, but with great mercies will I gather you. In a little wrath I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on you, saith the Lord your Redeemer. That's talking about Israel. We would agree. We would agree. Now, can I please show you this in the New Testament? One verse. You want to show does, us does, Isaiah 54? Does, does, does it preset with Isaiah 54? Like, is it like a quote of Isaiah 54? It's, or is it something it's new? talking about it's talking about it's talking about who it's talking about who the saints are. <laughs> you want to <laughs> Wait, sir. Hold on. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Man. So, so we're leaving. I just want to clarification. We're leaving Isaiah fifty four and seven. Yeah. Yeah. And that and you. That's talking about Israel. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We, we, we okay. 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 We could, all right. I, 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 I'm. It's saying the same thing that that Hosea well, we, says. We got. We got you. We got you. We it's, just. It's definitely saying the same thing that Hosea is saying. We agree. We with agree that. with that. We what uh, what what scripture you want? Uh, Ephesians, uh, one second, 2 and 11. What you want? Ephesians 2 and 11. No, for uh, go to well, verse 1 1 and then 4 17. Ephesians 1 and 1, yeah, okay, okay, the blessing of redemption. That's a great title. This Ephesians 1. In chapter 1, verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Now go right. to verse uh, 17 in chapter 4. All right. All right. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 17. It says, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Mm -hmm. Why would it say other Gentiles if they were if they were Israel? Well, what that is saying that that would prove they are Israel because he's telling them not to walk like the Gentiles. He's saying not to walk like the other other. 
What you mean? The other? You mean the other Gentiles or the other nations? Uh, other Gentiles, like, like, let's say you're, um, you're, you're, uh, let's say I'm talking to, to you. I don't know. Um, and your fa and your family's around, and I'm like, hey, don't act like your other brothers, right? Okay. So what so you're saying you say, is these are Gentiles, but Paul is telling them don't act like the other Gentiles. And he's still calling them Gentiles by saying other Gentiles. That's that's fine. Okay. Now can I ask so you a question? So, so even though they're saints, they're they're Gentiles right now. Okay. That's that's if that's that's what you interpret that as. No, no, that's what it says. Okay, well, can I ask you a question? Where does uh where does Paul get his learning from? Where does he get his breakdowns from? Jesus Christ. Is that what Paul says? Yeah, he was with Jesus for, what, three years in the desert? Paul? Paul, no. yeah. No. No. He was not. Yeah. He was physically with Jesus for three, three years, years in the desert. That's what it says. Can you? I, I, I would. I just want to read that. Yeah, I, I, I gotta read. I've that never one. read that. I've one. never read that one. We can come back to his Ephesians four and seventeen, but this is new information. Yeah, pull that out. Uh, we want to see that one. You, you I ain't know that. <laughs> you know, I like. I like learning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see. Let me see that. Because I got a couple of, I just want to let you know, Daniel, we're going to let you get it. But I got a couple of scriptures that Paul said verbatim, and I want you to tell me what these mean. Uh, then I went up to. Shoot, I, I, I want to stay in Ephesians 4. You can. I'm just saying. You can handle Ephesians 4. I got questions too. So we can do it. Whatever. Ephesians 4, really. this, is, this, is, this is good right here. But I do, I do want to see because I've never read. You know what I'm saying, Paul. Uh, do you guys have like a? I don't have a Google search I can use right now. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, paraphrase it. Paraphrase um, it. Um, it says that he was in the desert of Arabia with Jesus. Paul, oh, the desert is right there. Okay. Galatians one and seventeen. Let's see. I think there's another. I think there's another place. I just can't. Well, there is. We'll find it. It's Galatians. Right. Galatians one seventeen, and it's and it reads, "Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Demarcus." This is talking about him going to Arabia and teaching, the same as going to Demarcus. Well, read up. Maybe maybe read read. Start at verse fifteen. Verse fifteen. But when it pleased God. Who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in, in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I confronted not with the flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them, which were apostles before me, but I, I went into Arabia and returned again into the market. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, we'll keep reading it. Yeah. It's still it's it still says it's then, so interesting. It's it so says, interesting. After three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. Who's his mother's womb? Huh? Who's his mother's womb he's talking about? He's talking about his physical mother's womb. He's talking, no, he's not. He's talking about Israel right there. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? How? How? Because when, because, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, did, did his son get revealed in Paul when he was born or when he was born again? I would say when he was born again. So that happened. That's not his physical mother right there. I mean, that. That has nothing. That has nothing to do with verse with verse sixteen, though. Even if we, if I <laughs> even yeah, I'm just trying to say like, even if if you say that like, I don't know what you're getting at. I'm gonna be honest with you. This what I'm not, saying, is, no, this is not 
This is not proven that Christ died for the Gentiles. I just want you to know that. It, yeah, it is. This is how this is how Paul talks. Paul is using spiritual language here. Now, how, how do we know that? How do we know that? Because you can see it in other places, like First Corinthians. You can see it. Well, you know, you guys think that First Corinthians ten is about your spirit, your physical fathers. It's not, because he already tells you before that that he's talking to now, now, that now. he that he's talking to spiritual yeah, sons. I, I understand, but the whole reason why we left Ephesians four in the same in the same book was in the desert you said, with Jesus for three years. This is not talking about him in the desert. That's I don't see Paul in the desert with Jesus for three years. So uh, uh, Arabia is the desert. Where's Jesus? Where's though? Jesus though? Where's he with Jesus in here? I think it's in another place, but I gotta you find it. Or you off. know? Yeah, let's just get off. This. What? You think or you know? I don't think it? before I said. Oh, you misspoke. Just let me know. I don't know. No, no, no. I, I didn't misspeak. Okay. Um, I'm gonna study that one a little bit more because. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's. let's I can't get, find the read. verse. I think there's another verse no. somewhere. No, no, don't go to go to go to go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel. 11. So in Ephesians, Ephesians four and, and seventeen, the next verse, verse eighteen, having an understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their hearts. So you believe that this is all talking about Gentiles. So when when did the Gentiles be alienated from God? When when do we see the Israelites alienated Gentiles? When do we see? Well, not not Israelites, but when when have Gentiles been alienated from God? Uh, when have they been alien? They've been alienated since birth. Mm -hmm. They they they've been alienated but, since since Israel? they were. Since they were in their mother's womb. But it says because of the blindness in their heart, though. Yeah, because they can't see. <laughs> because the Gentiles can't see. Right. So do you, so so being alienated, what does what does alienated mean? You got the blue letter right there, right? Yeah, I'm gonna pull it up. I want you to tell me before I got it. But we don't it know if you matter. agree with the blue letter. So okay. so you do agree with this blue letter, though? Yeah, do you? Because if not, I'll move no. along. <laughs> so, so the blue letter is not a homogenous truth. Some of it is studies, and some of it is definitions. The studies in it are general. Okay, so do you believe this study of alienate to be a non-participant, alienate or to be an alien? Yeah, to be that's what I mean. To be away? Um, yep. Okay, so didn't you, didn't you just tell us that Israel was estranged from God for a brief moment in time? Wouldn't that be alienation? Say it one more time. Say it one more time. Oh, no, you can't have that. Let me look at, um... You, you said that there. You said that Israel was alien. That was your whole point of going to Hosea, too. I don't, I don't have your, I don't have your, uh... I don't have my blue letter or my uh, give me give me one second. Okay. So I'd have to see the tense alienated. Was that alienated? No, I'm serious. I don't. I don't know. Alienate. To alienate or alien? What's what's the root and what does it say? Alienate. Okay. We're gonna alienate. You know what alienate means, Daniel. Well, even yeah, I know, but I'm saying in that sentence, are does that mean they've been alienated from birth, or they get alienated later on? It means because we we know it, that it, the Gentiles are estranged. No, it tells it tells you why they're being alienated. It does. So we're going to have any understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness in their hearts, hold on, let me get the rest, yeah. who, being past feelings, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness with greediness. That's 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 how they became alienated. They were right. Insane. That's now, did Israel that's, do that? Did Israel do that? I'm not saying they didn't. So if you're not saying that they didn't, did they do it? 
This is talking about Gentiles. Did Israel do did Israel do that? Did they do what, what Ephesians 4, verse 18 and 19 said that these group of people was alienated for? Did Israel do that? Did they go Israel, the was all, Israel was also alienated, yes. So okay, Israel was also alienated. We're gonna read, give me that in uh Ezekiel. This is Ezekiel 11 and verse 15. It says, Son of man. Thy brethren, even thy brethren, mm -hmm. the men of thy kindred, the men of your kindred, and all of the house of Israel, holy, and all the whole house of Israel, uh -huh. are, are they unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said? So the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the Jews, the Jews that were walking in jewelry, uh huh, get you far from the Lord, get you far from the Lord. Unto us is this is this land given unto in possession. us, the Jews, is this land given into possession. That's Israel being alienated. Or it, it's skewed away. We see it in the text. Now I need I need to see this exact this exact process. The heathens or the Gentiles being with God, being with Israel, and then being eschewed or casted away from God to the point where they're alienated. I don't see that in the scriptures. Can you show us that in prophecy? This is talking about this is talking about man mankind as a whole, right here. Mm. Well, can you show us mankind as a whole doing that? Now, 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 here's the thing. It's not because as you took us to Ephesians 1 and 1, it's to the saints. It, that is true. And, and we know that we know because our position is that the saints are Israel. We know right. that and I, right. those and saints, we know, I, they, I know. Are, they are alienated. So if the saints are also Gentiles, where where do we see the Gentiles walking with God and then and then leaving God? So you have Gentiles, and uh -huh. then why would you say to a Gentile who's born again, don't be like the other Gentiles when when they now come to this truth that they're an Israelite? Why would Paul say the other Gentiles? Why? He's telling them don't be like them. Because don't be they... like the other, other, other. Uh -huh. He's telling them they are Gentiles. Y yeah. He's, <laughs> he's telling them that they're still Gentiles. No, no, no. He, he's he's telling he's telling Gentiles who now are coming into the faith. Don't be like don't be like them. Don't be like them. Don't, don't no, no. Like he said, no. He's, he says don't be like the other Gentiles. Yes. OK, so so the, the the people he's talking to, they were once Gentiles as well. Correct. Because they didn't believe in Christ. The people he's talking to are still Gentiles because. Thought they were born He's again. saying, "Don't be like the other Gentiles." And I thought they were saints. I thought they were saints, though, and born again, so they can't still be Gentiles, according to you. They're they're both they're saints and they're born again and they're Gentiles. So so that can so so a Gentile can be a saint, Israel, and a Gentile, but an Israelite can't be a Gentile or a heathen. If you're talking to a church, it can have saints. Israelites can, that are born a, again and can Greeks an that are born be again. A Gentile? Can an Israelite be a Gentile? A physical a cases, Israelite can be a, few, a Gentile. In a few cases, maybe you you guys might have a verse. So can they be a Gentile? I don't know. Can, can, they, be a can Gentile? they be? Yes, that's the question. It uh, they either can or can't. If it depends, that means they can. I don't know what verse you're going to use for that. I, I know I know your presuppositions very well. Okay. So what's your point? I'm so, I'm just asking because you asking. told me that a Gentile can be an Israelite. I'm asking you, can an Israelite be a Gentile? In the same sense. Dumb it down. Can an Israelite be called after? No, he's not the, dumb. He's Daniel, you're not. You're a smart man. You understand what I'm asking you. <laughs> you you fully understand what I'm asking you. If a wait, what did you what did you say that I said? You believe that a physical Gentile can now be Israel. They can be an Israelite now. And a saint. And, and a saint. And born again. And born again. You believe all this. I'm asking you, can a physical Israelite be a Gentile or a heathen? When when they act like heathen, God calls them heathens. Okay. All right. And that and, yeah. is our point. That's our that's our whole that's our hard teaching. And and, I, and where I, we I, I get it. Oh, I get oh, I get it. Where we, I just want to, it got to be stated. Where we disagree is, we believe that point right there is why in the New Testament you see Gentiles and heathens, not for every case, but for most cases, when you see Gentiles and heathens, it is because physical Israelites 
have become Gentiles or heathens through their actions. You see that in Romans 2, them, them uh, of the circumcision not keeping uh, uh, the works of the law, <laughs> making their circumcision counted as uncircumcision. We see that. You believe that when you see Gentiles and heathens, majority of the time it's talking about physical Gentiles. That's the disconnect. That is the disconnect. Even though you you know and you believe and you agree that Israelites can be called Gentiles and heathens, however, you believe in the New Testament, those are actual Gentiles and heathens. That's the disconnect. We found it. So so here here's what I believe that God can God uses terms and language way beyond how we use it. Mm -hmm. That's why when Jesus said, these are not my mother or my sisters or my brethren. Why did he say that? Why did he say that? Because those that do the will of God are his kin's people, not what those that are, are his are his physical blood. What, what is his what is the will of God? No, we ain't even we ain't even gonna get on that, man. We're gonna stick to the top. We're gonna we just gonna get off of here. We're just <laughs> leaving on. Right. So we don't got your verse, man. Now we're about to hit these two verses, and then after that, if there's any other things we want to talk about, we're gonna table it for next time, right? So we're gonna get Isaiah 53. What you want specifically? What? Verse eight. Verse eight. Yeah, let's just get to the point. Do you believe Isaiah 53 is talking about Christ? Are you familiar with the chapter? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's talking about let's the servant. Yep, so this is Isaiah 53 and 8. And Isaiah, was he Israelite? Yeah, yeah, he was. Okay, so this is Isaiah 53 and 8. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generations? For he was cut off, he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. You want to say something on that? Yeah, I just want to say, uh, who is Isaiah's people? Isaiah's people, well, right here, my people is talking about Israel. So Christ was cut off, cut off for the Israelites? Um, so. And I want to get 10 because you said. But, but you got to remember, Hosea says they will be my people, which were not my people. Yeah, that's fine. We're talking about Isaiah talking 53. talking about Isaiah 53 right now. So we, we've, we've dealt with Hosea. Yeah. We don't agree no, with Hosea, no. but we, we've dealt with Hosea. Jose is going to deal with us continually, and so is the rest of the Bible. We don't just deal with the Bible and table it. Right. The Bible but, but deals sir, with us continually. Sir, sir, we already talked about Hosea. We too. talked about Hosea we too. About Hosea and we said we believe Hosea 2 is talking about actual Israel. You believe it's talking about his daughter. So now I'm we're. Saying, off, I'm saying we're it's talking about my people. people. We're off of Hosea 2. Who is Isaiah? Isaiah 53, people? about the prophecy of Christ dying. Who is the people of Isaiah? Because that is who the mo the Messiah has died for, for their transgressions. Kind of similar to Hebrews 9 and 15. I'm not I'm not gonna let I'm not gonna let you put me in a corner with this because I'm, my I mean, people if you disagree, well, you disagree. can just disagree. <laughs> We're just asking a question. So Isaiah's people are the Israelites. Does it say that he was cut off for them? In this passage. He's saying that he's cut off for his people. Okay. Which, right. were, which are Israelites. And the Gentiles that come in. Where is that in verse 8? Well, or 9? Or 7? Uh, or the whole you chapter? You can't just take one scripture. Okay, let's okay, read the whole chapter. Read the whole chapter then. This is Isaiah 50, 53 and verse 1. Who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of a dry ground, he have no form or comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquitted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne arteries and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. He shall make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall, shall see in the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteousness 
my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. So going back to the original question, sir. Can you, can you keep can you keep reading the next six verses? We already five? did. That's, that's the end of the no, chapter. No, the, the next five verses. Sorry. But you, you disagree. Hold on. You disagree that Isaiah 54 is talking about Israel. So what's the what? what's the point of keeping reading? The next verse is talking about Israel. You agree with that? You agree with it? No, yeah, I want you guys to see to up to verse five, though, please. Of Isaiah 54? Yeah. Just keep okay. reading the next okay, five now, verses. Now, we're going to do that. But verse eight. Is this talking about Israel? Oh my okay, let's keep no going. no 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 we're going to go to verse to Isaiah 54. Oh my well, verse 8 is this talking about Israel? Contextually, we just read the whole chapter. And you the said we can't take one uh, th this is talking about this is talking about spiritual Israel right here. This but is keep reading the next spiritual, spiritual where is, where spiritual Israel. How? How? Where? where? In in this chapter, the whole chapter we read, where? Because it can't be spiritual because it said as, as, as Isaiah saying, my people, his people are not spiritual. His people aren't spiritual. So where does it say that? It, his people as a nation are spiritual. So Isaiah's the, people. The concept, the concept of, of, of a people is it don't say spiritual a people. in this sense. Hold on. It doesn't say a people. It says my I'm just, people. I'm just saying in general you can't it doesn't it, matter what you're saying in general what is all right i i disagree but i want you to read the next five verses please okay he, he disagrees okay well okay. apparently christ was physically killed for the transgressions of spiritual people of spiritual israel real people which is which is which you believe is the church which you believe is yes church. well no not necessarily the multi-ethnic church including israel I believe that Israel is going to get grafted back in right before the millennium. Right, right. But Isaiah in, in the tribulation, right, in the right. tribulation, but because Isaiah, like because like Joseph, because like Joseph, Jesus Christ is going to reveal himself uh -huh. to his brethren. That's right, that's right. fine, but we're talking about Isaiah fifty three, the atonement of Christ. So Isaiah fifty three yeah. in this when when Isaiah says, "My people." He's talking about a spiritual people. If that's your position, that's your position. We're gonna move on. I, I'm talking about his church. So when Isaiah says my people, he's, he's talking about the, the multi-ethnic church. church. Yeah, he's, he's talking not about his church. People, no. Okay, I just want to make sure we that's and that's and, and that and that includes that includes Israel. But okay. it's, yeah, it's yeah, on yeah. a timeline. That's the disconnect. That's the disconnect. We believe that the people of Isaiah was Israel, physical Israel only. You believe. Is everyone in the world? Let's keep reading. Uh, I believe it's his church. Okay, it, you believe is everyone in the world who believes in Christ, which is the church? Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I, okay. I, I know. You, I know your doctrines. Let's man. let's keep reading. Let's, he asked us to keep reading, so we're gonna do that. Next chapter. He said. The, he said he wants uh, to read. Yeah, just read. Just read the first. You no. can read as much as you want, but I definitely <laughs> want to get to verse five. Okay. All right. So and I got a question on verse four. Just to let you know. This is Isaiah 54 and one. Sing, O barren, you that did not bear. Break forth into sing and cry aloud, you that does not that does not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, said the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of your inhabitants, of, of your inhabitations. Spare not. Lengthen your cores and strengthen your stakes, for you shall break forth on the right hand and on the left, and your seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Mm. Fear not, for you shall not be ashamed, neither be you confounded, for you shall not be put to shame, for you shall forget the shame of your youth and shall not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. For your maker is your own husband. The Lord of hosts is his name and your redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. Well, you want six or you want to stop? So, yeah. So I want to talk about, um, first of all, that 
Israel has a widowhood because her maker, one of her makers, because the verse uh, five is, it's a plural word for maker there. And so one of her makers is God the Son, Jesus Christ. And he died making Israel a widow. And um, thy redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. So he's going to redeem her again. And then the next part of the prophecy is the God of the whole earth, Haharetz, shall he be called. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Christ will rule the whole earth. What, what I'm saying is when, when, uh, when, when an Israeli today, or I don't know, people that speak modern, modern you, you guys speak uh, something that was given to you by an angel. I think it was a fallen angel. But um, the people that are in, I'm serious. <laughs> Okay. The language that you, you guys slick, use. I, you what? Slick. You slick. I like you. You slick. Keep going. Keep going. Well, I, Keep going. I, got a qu I got a question right after, though. I just want Don't to ask them about no fallen angels. <laughs> no, no, no. Not about that. I want to stay in the chapter. Go ahead, though. Keep, yeah, keep, keep going. Keep going. Um, so, Haharetz usually refers to the land of Israel. But this is saying Haharetz, the whole, the coal Haharetz. The coal is like the whole, like that's why, so the word Caleb means whole heart or it means dog, but coal is all, the whole earth, he'll be called the, I know you guys probably don't see it, but the fact that he's not called the God of Israel here, he's called the God of the Kol Haharetz. Yeah, all, the whole it, planet. He's going to be God over the whole we, planet. We believe, we, believe we believe that. We believe that. Okay. And so that's all I'm saying is that like this, this, this backs up what Jose, what I was saying earlier about God, the son, yod heh vav -He dying as, as Israel's husband. And just like Ephesians says that he died for his whole church and that the two will become one. So, just like just like Jacob had Rachel and Leah, Jesus has Israel. He has he has Rachel, which he loves, but he doesn't get her first. He gets Leah first. He gets the Gentile church prior to getting Ra to getting Rachel. Later on in the millennium. Or right wait, before wait, it. Wait, 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 wait. Are you equating He's Christ? Yes. <laughs> yes. You're equating Christ marrying the, the, the heathen as to Jacob marrying Leah? What what I'm saying is that Leah and Rachel are a type. Of, yeah, they, yeah, you're saying they're supposed to symbolize Israel and the heathen the or heathen, the Gentiles. That's what you're trying to say. The, yeah, the nations, yeah. I, well, I just want so, you to know that. I just want to let you know just. It don't make no sense because those they're related to Jacob, so they don't know how to. Yeah, but yeah, but this is typology. This is this has nothing to do with genetics right here. Okay, what's That's, what's your point? My my point is that is that God uses typology to show what He's gonna do, and that right now He's bringing in the fullness of the Gentiles. Later on, He's gonna bring Israel back in. And you and, and those and, and, and don't 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 misinterpret me. Those that are those that are those that are physically Israel now probably don't even know it. That's fine. Dude. Like you're we're just asking. So you're basing all this breakdown off of Jacob Mary, and Leah and Rachel? I'm not I'm not basing all of it. I'm basing I, I'm not basing all of, I'm saying I'm saying that Jesus I'm saying that the widow the widow, the bride that he's going to marry is the Gentile church mm -hmm. that includes not – so don't misquote me. What most people say the Gentile church is is just the church. Is, is that what also saying, the body of Christ? Yeah, is the body of Christ. Okay, he's we, dying for we, the body we, of Christ. Oh, so, okay. so I got the, a question. So the, the, the church is supposed to represent his, his spiritual temple too. I, I know. So you, so so in, in in the millennium, 
in the millennium, there's I think there's a distinction between the church between between Israel and and the church that was already that was already saved. Okay, so just and then just, I think that after after that, because I understand so, you believe all, you, you believe it's all the one church. body. Right, you believe the church is the body of Christ. Is, is the body of Christ the temple, the spiritual temple? Right, that's what New Jerusalem is talking about. Right, so you believe that that to be in the body of Christ, you're a part of the spiritual temple as well with Him in Christ. We can be we can be here and we can be in heavenly places at the same time. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, man, I ain't trying to trip you up. I know I know your doctrine. <laughs> if you're a part of the church, you're, you're a part, part of the body of Christ, Christ. You're a part of the spiritual temple. We get it. Yeah, I yeah. Want yes. Okay. Yeah, that's what want. There's a problem with that. What is first, it? First question though. There's a problem with that because in Isaiah 54 and verse, can you can we read verse three? It literally says, "For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left hand." And thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles. How can this be talking about spirit uh, representation of Gentiles coming into the fold with Israel when it literally says that the descendants of Israel are going to inherit the Gentiles? And literally that precepts Isaiah 61. Can you give me Isaiah 61 in verse 9? Well, this is Isaiah 6, 1 and 9, and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles uh -huh. and their offspring among the people. Uh -huh. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. This is this is foreshadowing the gospel because if you jump up above the gospel in verse 4, it literally says that we're gonna in we're gonna put the other nations in slavery. So my question to you is how is a Gentile supposed to be coming in, but in Isaiah? 54 and 3, and, and in the gospel, Isaiah 61, verses 4 all the way to 9, the heathen are going into slavery. Like, they're not, they're not, it doesn't, it doesn't say that they're going to be a part of the folk. It literally says that the seed of Israel is going to inherit the other Gentiles. Can you make that make sense? Yeah, I can. Okay. Um, I'm just looking up the strong. Because it's the church, right? It's the church, right? <laughs> you believe that this Israel, this seed of Israel is the church, the multi-ethnic church. So who is this Gentile? Uh, no, no, hang on. Hang on. Bring. Two, two, 33. What, what, what did you say? What did you say? Uh, Zerah. Zerah, I'm pretty sure that means seed, don't it? You looking for seed or Gentile? What do you want? Seed. Seed? Yes. Yeah, seed. It means the seed. The seed, uh, singular, shall inherit. Yeah. That's Christ. Yeah. Okay, but seed also can be used as offspring, you know, children. It can, it can also be used for that, too. So, and all of right. this, we believe that Christ is the top of the Israelites. And then we have the Israelites under Christ, and all together, Christ and the Israelites are going to inherit the Gentiles. That's what um, it literally, literally no. In Isaiah, no, I, in Isaiah no. 54 and 3, it literally said the physical descendants of Israel are going to inherit the Gentiles. Can you can you when it says name? your when it says your seed, that's referring to Christ. He's the one that's going to inherit the Gentiles. Are 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 the Israelites fellow heirs with Christ? Everybody that's in Christ is a fellow heir with him. So if you're in Christ, that means you're going to inherit the same thing as Christ, correct? I'm in Christ, therefore I inherit well, what oh, he inherits. You, you, I'm just asking. Yeah, if you're, yeah, if yeah. you're in Christ, you inherit the same thing as Christ, right? You know, you know, God is our inheritance. No, bro. In yeah, Isaiah 54 and 3. This says that the seed of Israel is going to inherit the Gentiles. You said it's Christ. That's fine. And, Are we fellow heirs with Christ? It's both and, okay? So that means that, so according to you, this means that the multi-ethnic church is going to inherit other non-Israelites. I'll help you out, Daniel. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. Are these non-believing non Gentiles? What is that? What's maybe that? It's the, maybe it's the non-believing Gentiles. You, you, maybe that's the answer. 
Maybe, maybe the multi-ethnic church inherits the Gentiles with Christ, but the Gentiles they're inheriting are the non-believing Gentiles. Maybe. I mean maybe. that that could be an interpretation. I, hey. I'm gonna. I'm gonna <laughs> no. So I gotta I gotta ask you this. So when we jump up that, can you give me Isaiah uh, sixty-one and and uh? All right, man. If, yeah, if first, let me no, because we got. I gotta get this, bro. I gotta understand this. So in Isaiah sixty-one and three. It says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beautiful ashes, the oil of joy and mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that, they, that he might glorify, be glorified. And they shall build the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the wasted cities, the desolation of many generations. And strangers shall feed your flock and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen. In your vine dresses, I just gotta know. Oh, and in verse six, it says, But ye shall be known, it said, You shall be, be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of, of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. So, are you saying that the this right here is the multi ethnic church eating the riches or and putting the other Gentiles into slavery? I'm trying to get your understanding. No, that's, this is, that's, the reason that's, that's, I'm asking, on, Daniel, look, the reason why I'm asking is is because Isaiah is basically staying on the same point and he's saying the same thing, correct? He's staying on the same point from Isaiah 54 to, to, to Isaiah 61. So I need to understand are these Gentiles ethically not Israel? This, the one, the this, is the, this is talking about the millennium. Okay, I, we, we understand yeah. all of this is talking about the millennium. It's just we we believe that the people the priests of the Lord here is solely Israel. You believe is the multi ethnic church, which is fine. We just trying to get. But them. whoever these priests of the Lords are, they right. the Bible says they shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory they shall boast. So who are these Gentiles? That are getting their riches eaten of and, and their glory getting taken and boasted over. I don't even know if these Gentiles are even alive at this point. It just says the riches. They they gotta be alive. Right. <laughs> wait, wait, you so, said this is the millennial this reign. Millennial reign. They gotta be alive, bro. What are you talking about? Well, what I was, well, there's there might be some cities that are left over with without it people. It obviously is because they're they going to rebuild the cities. With the Bible right. says, you, rebuild the cities. You're not, re, you're not so, rebuilding the cities in heaven. You, re, you rebuild cities on earth. So this is... Before this is, I before I answer that, I need you to answer Ezekiel. No, no. no, no yes. No. We're not answering no questions. You have to... You're, you're on the hot seat. You answer questions. You no, no. I'm not, I'm not on the hot seat. You are. We just asked you a question. You're not answering. We're not going nowhere else, bro. Listen, we'll go to Ezekiel, but we need Isaiah 61 and 6. Answer however way you feel. have because that that goes with Isaiah 54 and 3. We need to understand. So, so the priests here uh -huh. is talking about the church that coming from Zion. Yep. So Zion is a church. You know, yeah, Zion, a, Zion is Jerusalem, which is above. So Zion is not the church, it's not the multi-ethnic church, it's just Jerusalem. Zion is a city, and New Jerusalem comes down. Man, That's why he said Jerusalem. You know, right. in, in Isaiah sixty-one, in Isaiah sixty-one, what is the subject? Who who is the subject? Who is Zion? Here? Why is God getting revenge for Zion? We what is what's going on, bro? Break this down. Remember, we don't. I don't know nothing, so I need you to answer it. Who is Zion? Zion is New Jerusalem. Okay. <laughs> Mount Zion. Okay. Right. Oh, right? Man. No, Mount Zion is the Israelites. That's what it's representing to them. Verse 3. Okay. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Are Who is the them here? Um, I don't I don't know. Okay. Them but that you, mourn. Those that mourn. Question finally. But you just don't but, know. But hold on. But you don't know who mourns in Zion. Those that mourn in Zion, this is talking about. This is talking about after Christ comes back okay. to reign, okay. right? Okay. Because the gospel was Isaiah 61, 1 through 2. No, the, this whole thing is the gospel all the way through. No, no, irrelevant. Well, irrelevant. Irrelevant. Yeah, Verse two, okay. who is this for? Going down. Those that mourn in Zion, I'm, I'm, my personal thought, opinion, whatever, 
is that in the tribulation, a bunch of crazy stuff happens, and they're going to be mourning for the first who, who's couple they? of years. Who's, who's, they? Who, who's they? This is Israel right here. Those that mourn who's in Zion. So those but it could also be Israel. anybody. It could be anybody that's left that's left behind. So it could be anyone. Is it Israel or is it anyone? It can be, it can be anybody that's left alive that comes from Zion. Anyone that's left alive that comes from Zion, entering into the millennial reign. Because you said millennial reign earlier, or did you misspeak? Okay, I got stuff going on behind me. Go ahead. Earlier you said this was the millennial reign. Now you're saying it's anyone who's left alive in Mount Zion. So are we talking about those that are left yeah. alive in Mount Zion that goes into the millennial reign? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so to so appoint unto them, those that's left alive in Zion, verse 4, and they shall build the oasis. So this is those that are left alive in Mount Zion. Right? So what, what I'm going to do, so what so no, this is basic English. No, listen, listen, listen. Those that are left alive in Zion, I believe this happens at the end of the tribulation. Okay. And that they're going into the millennium. Okay. Is and it the same it, people could, in verse it, four? It, it very well, I believe it is talking about Israel here. Yeah. Right. So is it Zion. everyone that's left alive or is it just Israel? I I think it's just Israel. Okay, so verse 3 is just Israel. Verse 10, bro. And verse 4 is still just Israel. Is it, yep. is it now, 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 is Israel, so who are these strangers? Oh, yeah, who are these strangers? They're going to stand and feed Israel's flock because the your here contextually is, is Israel. So who's the strangers? I believe it's, any, it's anybody left alive that goes into the millennium. Okay, so we have Israel, and then those that are left alive are going to feed Israel's flocks. Right. And who's who, who's the son of the alien? Are those that are left alive too? Yep. Okay, so we have those that are left alive going to feed the flocks of Israel. Uh, the sons of the aliens shall be the plowmen and vine dressers of Israel. But you, so this is still talking about Israel, shall be named the priest. So the priest of the Lord is Israel. The priest of the Lord is Israel. Do you agree? Yeah, it looks like it. it, looks like it. Okay, okay, so it says, and men shall call you Israel. Mm -hmm. The ministers of our God, you, Israel, shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. So the Gentiles here are those that are left alive after or, or going into the millennial reign. I don't have a problem with that. So Israel is going to inherit the Gentiles. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. But That's fair. I'm going to say this. I believe that the church, I believe in the rapture, and I believe the church is in New Jerusalem at that time. Well, he, okay. So because earlier you said the church... The church was, was the body of Christ and that they are the spiritual temple. All right. So let's, let's just let's deal with that. All right. So got to go to Ezekiel 47 before you. Well, do that, well I want to I want to go to eschatology. I want to I want to look at the. Uh, OK, please. Yeah. I want to go to eschatology. This is my this is my jam right here, man. Hey, man. I hope this so. Day. <laughs> I hope so. So these revelations. We're in, we're in that time. Yeah, it is. So this is Revelations 11 and 1. And there was given me a reed, like unto a reed, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. Do you believe that this is the spiritual temple? Revelations 11. The temple of God. Revelations 11. Uh, give me a second. I got like three Bibles open. No, that's good. It's fine. We got like three ourselves over here, man. <laughs> and I don't have a way to to. I don't, you're on my phone right now, so. Uh -huh. Anyway, let me get there. And after this, man, we're going to Isaiah 59, and we we done. We done. <laughs> we done. This, is, this is the second to last verse, man. Uh, second to last. Where is it? Revelations 11 and 1. What temple is this? Is this the spiritual temple? This is eschatology. Yeah, well, this is a temple. Excuse me. Let me let me let me look at it for a second. Mm-hmm. 
So the where's the seventh trumpet? So um and the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take this little book which is in the hand of the angel which sent upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book, and he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and thou shalt make thy belly bitter. Sweet as honey, and I took the little book out of the angel's mouth and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey, and his belly was good as I must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. And there was given unto me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel said, Rise, measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship there in the court. So we yeah, added the Gentiles, two witnesses. So I believe that the trumpet, the mystery of God is finished. The seventh trumpet is blown and the church is gone. Hey, hey sir, sir, we ain't asked you yeah. about no trumpet. We want to know about this, this temple. Can, we, can you talk about the temple? Is this the spiritual so temple? So I, I, I honestly uh, think that you don't know. It's however you think. Whatever you think. Or you just don't want to lean on a side. I don't, I don't want to say what I'm thinking is not coming from scripture. So when I say I think, it just means. No, I understand. Don't, I understand. Don't I, understand. I understand. I just, I just want, do you, is this a physical temple or is this a spiritual temple? So the the all right the close with all the time. Yeah, this, this is the this is the temple that this is the temple that Christ's temple. Okay. I mean, it's okay to say I don't know. I just want you to know that. I I think I really think that the uh, the abomination of desolation is happening. Man, look, man. Around oh, yeah, man. Daniel, Daniel, what? That's irrelevant. No, I'm, I, I'm no, it's not because Matthew 11, twenty. Matthew listen, twenty four. Listen, I don't want all the stories. Is Revelations eleven and one? Is this a spiritual temple? Or a physical temple. I don't need no extra. I just I just want to know because I'm about to read these two verses, yes. and I want to know your understanding. This is a, a physical or a spiritual temple. I'll tell you what I think it is. Would you like that, or do you just want to say it's both, or no? I'm just. So I know that during this time, there's also a physical temple because right. that's what Revelation 13, yeah, really, that, that, and, and I know that there's a heavenly temple as well, but mm -hmm. New Jerusalem hasn't come down yet. And so I know to, also to this, is, this is both. You want to you want to say this could be both the spiritual and the physical or no, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say that. Okay. You just want us to, to lead this. Revela Revelation 11 is kind of hard for me to understand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we know. Yeah. You read verse two, huh? You read verse two, didn't you? That's not why it's hard for me to understand. <laughs> <laughs> so, so hey, read, read verse two for us. What, what is your understanding of that? Well, it's given unto the Gentiles. What's given unto the Gentiles? Well, this is how it was. This is how the... This is how the first and second temples were. But what was given to the Gentiles? But what's given to the Gentiles here in verse two? The courts. The, so um, is this the courts inside the temple or outside the temple? It's outside the actual temple itself. Okay. Yeah. So if the Gentiles are outside of the temple of Christ, and the temple of Christ is the body of Christ, and the body of Christ is the church, how are the Gentiles a part of the church if they're outside of the church? Because they're not, they're not, they weren't believers. Oh, so these, so the Gentiles that are outside the court are the non-believing Gentiles. 
the believing Gentiles are inside the court. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Okay. That's fair. I don't agree because it don't say that. It don't say that anywhere in the text. But that's we'll, fair. You, that's fair. That's fair. Can you ask my Jeremiah twenty three? I was gonna go to Isaiah fifty nine, but you go to Isaiah forty seven though first. Yeah. Well, well, because you know that's that's why we kind of diverted because I said we was gonna get two more scriptures. <laughs> one. Well, now this was the second. Now this the last one. The After last that, scripture. man, we are gonna have to set up another time. Yeah. All right. It's the it's the last it's the last one. Right, because I your your uh understanding of prophecy, man, I tell you, it's it's interesting. It's in real interesting. We just well, we're, to... we're in that time right we're now. Time. You're yes, right. The son of perdition will be revealed. You're right. So You're we right. have to we have to know what's going on. Okay, yep. that's fine. Yep. Now uh this is Jeremiah. Go to Jeremiah uh, chapter 23, and I'm gonna read verse five. This is Behold, well, I'll read it for you. I'll go ahead, go ahead. So this is Jeremiah 23 and 5. Behold, the days come, said the Lord. That I will raise raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. We know that's talking about Christ. Keep reading. And in his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. Now I got a question. This is talking about Christ coming back to, to redeem uh, his people, right? Why in this in this verse right here, in verse six, it only says that Judah and uh, Israel are being saved. Why, no, why is there no Gentiles being mentioned here? Well, going back to um, what I said, the when the church when the church leaves and goes to New Jerusalem, before it touches down, like the church gets raptured, I'm gonna let you talk. Like you. right? Yeah. And so the only people that are left to save is Judah and Israel. So Christ is coming back to save Judah and Israel. Yeah, during the last three and a half years of the tribulation. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, it doesn't it doesn't say that in here. So I'm right, that's my under, that's my understanding of it. I got that, but I just I'm just letting you know it does not say that in here. Keep reading though. All right. So verse uh, six or so seven. Therefore, behold, the days come, said the Lord. That they shall no more say the Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries where I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Yeah, I just brought this up because this physically says that Christ is coming back to save the physical descendants of Israel out of the north country, which is mystery Babylon. And right. I don't see how any Gentiles are mentioned in this getting saved, or it doesn't even say anything about the times of tribulation. So okay. I need I need can you reconcile why does this say Christ is coming for the Gentiles? Uh, because he's not dealing with the Gentiles right here. He's just dealing with, with Israel and Judah right here. So he's so only when, so when he comes back, that's who he's dealing with, Israel and Judah. When he comes back, he's coming back to take his church. When and Israel are, and Judah are Israel and Judah are still gonna be here because they they never got grafted in. They're not hold on, they never hold got on. married to God. How did they never get married to God? But Christ is coming to get them. And you see because, Daniel, that Daniel, makes Daniel. I'm just letting you know that makes then you've been talking in a circle. I just want you to know earlier, that, earlier you talking. told us that Israel was gonna be married back to God. Now you're saying Same. that they're not gonna be married back to God. No, but, I'm saying that they're not right now married in in a in a sense those that are israelites if you want to say jesus god you said jesus is god right yeah so this is him getting married back to the israelites right here this if he's coming to save them that's the marriage right and this is happening this marriage is happening after the church leaves the church leaves what the church is going to leave leave the earth oh you're talking about the rapture you're talking about the rapture yeah. Huh? Oh my God! So you 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 believe in dispensationalism? Not really. No, you, I mean that's to. that's the doctrine. You have to. No, I mean dispensationalists also the believe in the rapture. The no, don't don't. Okay, so so I'm not I'm not talking I'm not talking about a um a, a secret rapture. I'm talking no, about what Matthew twenty four says. So so correct me if I'm wrong. You believe that the, the church, the multi ethnic church, not Israel, it's gonna get is going to be raptured up. Meanwhile, Israel is going to go through tribulations, and then Christ. Um, yeah. 
No, nope. the church is going to go on. through. The church is going to go through tribulation as well. Before or oh. after the rapture? Before. Before the rapture. So the church right. has their own tribulation to go through besides Israel's tribulation. That's what Revelations is about. Mm -hmm. Hold on. So I, I got. Show me the church's tribulation. Uh, all right. Matthew 24. Matthew 24 is the church's tribulation. I'm going to show you the verse. It, no, Matthew 24 is talking about Gentiles. All right. Um, What's so, what verse? Oh, my goodness. It is the last thing yeah, we're talking golly. about. Golly. I got to hear this one. Matthew 24. Is talking about the tribulation of the church is which is not Israel, by the way, correct? Um, all right, let me go to you want to see where the church is going through tribulation, right? Yeah, you said it was in Matthew 24. Um, so take heed, no man deceive you. What verse? What verse? What verse? What verse? Verse four. Okay. For many shall come in my name, saying, "I am Christ," and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See, you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. <laughs> For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. That's the first five seals right there. Yeah, but you said this is about the church. I'm going to show you. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. That's is this the church. That's, is this, is this that's the, the church. church. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But the end, that but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. In all the world for a witness. We're gonna stand before we're gonna we're gonna be correct. We're gonna we're gonna stand before kings just like Paul did. Hold on, hold on. That gospel is what Isaiah 61 was talking about, correct? And this this is the gospel of the kingdom, right? That shall be preached in all the world for okay. Isaiah 61, correct? I this is a gospel of the kingdom. I'm gonna keep reading. And that's Isaiah 61, correct? Go and preach just, unto all hey, the just world. Keep reading. Hey, just keep reading. Just keep reading. Just keep reading. Because I, I want you to preach. I want you to break this. I want you to break down. This, Sixteen. And this, and this gospel of the king, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto mm -hmm. all nations, and then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. This is Revelation 13. Hold on, hold on. Who did so, the no. hold on? Who did the abomination of desolation happen to? Jesus is saying that this is a future event, right? I know here. who who did that happen to? What is the abomination of desolation? That's that's gonna happen in the temple. Oh. In the future? In the future? Yes. Yes. The the, the desolation that Daniel spoke about. Yes. Has it happened yet? It has not Has happened, it happened yet. Oh my God. I know what you're gonna say. I know you think the Maccabees, and I I That's think not, you're no, gonna. We're not. We're not it's talking not about. We're not talking about the Maccabees. It's not he's not talking about. about seventy A.D. No, he's not. He's, he's talking not? about. A, he's talking about a future temple. Yes. So the future temple has, is supposed to be has, built in the kingdom, correct? Has, has Revelation thirteen ha the no that there's so, hold on, hold on, hold on. So if the future temple is not supposed to be born, supposed to be built in the kingdom, where is this future temple going to be be built, bro? There's there's going to be a future. They're, they're working. They want to build a temple right now. 
This oh, is the man. fake. This is this is the. Hold on, hold, this, Danny, I'm gonna just stop you in your tracks. I'm gonna just stop your chat because this is definitely talking about 70 AD. Because verse 16 says, no, "Then let not. them which be in Judah, Judea, flee into the mountains." This definitely emphatically happened in 70 AD. The Judas fled out of. Out of after some of that stuff, some of that stuff did happen, but this is a, this is a, there's a lot of double prophecy you know, going hold on. on, hold on. It, 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 when the, when the Romans came and sacked the second temple, did, 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 you, did the people in Judea, did they flee to the mountains? I'm not saying they didn't, but this is a future event right So that, that happened then, correct? If you're just not going to say they didn't, that means it happened then, correct? No, I'm I'm saying that the fulfillment of this prophecy it has already yet to happened happen. because you just said uh, that it happened. Uh, no, so the, I'm so gonna so the Jews no, didn't flee. I'm, so I'm gonna say no. Go ahead, go ahead, bro. It, 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 what what happened? Listen to me. What happened in 70 AD and 200 AD is a type of what's gonna happen at the end. Because gotcha, gotcha. remember, it's, it's they're really asking weird. they're asking him, what's gonna be the sign of, what's gonna be the sign of your coming? Uh huh. The disciples coming, coming back. What's gonna be the sign? What's gonna be the sign? Yeah, this hasn't happened yet. All this of, hasn't all happened. Yet. Twenty-four was directed to his disciples. All of that saying. was directed to the disciples. So this is what we're gonna do. Yeah, uh, it, uh, it, the, it was, this, it's gonna be the last thing we talk about. Is so, Daniel nine? Yeah. We can, and so, after, after this, uh, hey, look, we could we could set up another date. To be honest, man, it's past three hours. Yeah. I don't feel like being on here no more. Yeah. So so so, so we're gonna talk about Daniel nine. <laughs> verse 25 on down because it's dealing with Christ and who Christ died for to see if it already happened, right? Because you believe that that the, this the temple he's talking about in Matthew 24 is, is going to be in the future, but before the millennial reign. That's what you believe. Has, so has Christ it. come back yet? L let's, let's no, know. not the second coming. Let's read. So, let's, so this is future. Read. We're going to read it. We're about to read it. We're, about to read we're just going to read the prophecy. This is Daniel 9 and 25. I'll read it. Go ahead. This is Daniel 9 and 25. It says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandments to, to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks. Now, 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 do you know when the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem was? Uh, that's when was? Um, that's when Nehemiah and Ezra started that building. That time period. Right. Okay. Keep reading on. It says... And three scores in two weeks, the street shall be built again, and the walls even uh, troubles in troubles in troublesome times. Now, now, is this talking about the time period of antiquity? Yeah, up First until the 69th week, that's when Jesus was crucified. In antiquity is verse 25 talking about the times of antiquity. Yes, no, Christ died during antiquity. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So verse 26. And, and after, after these three, and after after three scores, in two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. Now stop. Is this talking about Christ's death? Yeah. Right. But not for himself. Mm -hmm. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Who's the prince here? The prince is the the prince is Antichrist. That's the Antichrist? Yeah. So That's after, the Christ Christ. Died, after Christ died, there's a there's a where's the Antichrist? Because Christ died. So 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 there's gonna be an Antichrist that's going to come and destroy destroy Jerusalem and the sanctuary. After Christ died. That hasn't happened yet. Okay, let's keep reading. Okay. It's so everything we read from this point on is going to happen in the future, but before the millennial reign. Correct? Well, the millennial reign starts at the midpoint of the tribulation when the church is caught up. So when is this going to happen? When? Before or during or after the millennial reign. When is, when is what going to happen? The destruction of the temple. It's going to happen when... The destruction. It, uh, it, it says, "Shall destroy the city and the sanctuary." Right. When is the Antichrist going to destroy Jerusalem and the temple? At the midpoint of the tribulation. So this is before, after, or during the millennial reign. 
This is right at the beginning. So at the be so in the millennial. So reign. in the millennial reign, that's the beginning. No, 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 no. So the the anti the antichrist, he causes everybody to worship him. He sits in the temple, and then bro, none of right, no, no, listen, 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 no, listen, 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 go ahead, go ahead, Daniel. None and, of then Christ, that, and, then, and then Christ appears. He takes his church. One will be Paralambado and one will be here. And then the woman flees to the wilderness. And so Israel is still here for three and a half years. The church is, is gone. The church already went through its tribulation. Now Israel is going to go through three and a half years of tribulation. So basically, the destruction of the temple ushers in the millennial reign. The first three and a half years, I believe, of the tribulation are the also the first three and a half years of the millennium. And during those that, three and a half years, is the temple being destroyed by the Antichrist? Dur during those three and a half years, he is trying to get people to worship him. So in the first three years of tribulations is the temple destroyed by the antichrist yeah christ takes takes it back so the and antichrist then, destroys the temple in the first three years of the tribulation no so when does the antichrist destroy the temple is it the before during, that, or after the millennial reign the Antichrist sets himself up as God in the temple. Uh, yeah. Okay. At the mid, when at does the he destroy point, the temple? When does at he do the that? Point, at the, I don't. You don't know. Right don't around. Know. You say you don't know, Daniel. You? you say you don't know. It's fine if you don't. I'm you just trying to. Know. I'm trying to. I'm trying to follow you. You say you don't know, Daniel. I'm trying to help you out. You say you don't know. Because I'm gonna take what you said and I'm gonna put it against the scriptures and I'm gonna see if it if it makes sense to me. So the end thereof shall come with the flood. That's the flood that comes out of the beast's mouth against the woman. Uh, okay. Okay. When does the temple get destroyed? I know that the Antichrist gets smitten down at when he says he's God. Daniel, I'm gonna ask you again. When does the temple get destroyed by this Antichrist? Is it before, during, or after the millennial reign? It's during the tribulation. You don't know, bro. It's during it's during the tribulations. Yeah, it's during the. It's during is it the, the first three years of the tribulations? No. No, it's not the first three years of the tribulations. You told no, me the first three years of the tribulations is the start of millennial reign. You did say that. No, no, no. I didn't say that. The first three and a half years, I believe, of the tribulation are the also the first three and a half years of the millennium. Did the you last three, did you misspeak? The, the first three years of did the did tribulation. You did you misspeak? Just say you misspoke. I didn't, I didn't say that. The first three and a half years, I believe, of the tribulation are the also the first three and a half years of the millennium. Okay. Dang, the first I have three, it down. We have it written down, sir. All right. Well, that's the first said, three. Misquote, that's fine. We just say need that. to know that. All right. I misquote. The first oh, three right. years. Cool. Let, me, the let, first me, three, let me let me let me let me scratch that out. Yeah, because it's starting the to first, see that you're not. The first three nothing. years. The first three years deal with the tribulation, well, of the church. And then the last three and a half years is the mega, 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 the great tribulation. Daniel, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, because I'm walking with you. So when is the millennial reign? It happens right after Christ comes back. He starts cleaning up. So does Christ come back during the three years of tribulation, or during the last three years of tribulation, which is which is the great tribulation? Is it after the Great Tribulation or before the Great Tribulation or during uh, the Great Tribulation? He, he comes back. He comes back after um, the Antichrist sets himself up as God. Now, Daniel, that's not what I asked you. Is Christ coming back during the last three years of this Great Tribulation 
before it or after it? At the beginning of the of the first or uh, sorry, at the beginning of the second three and a half years. The beginning of the, the, the there's a second one. I thought it was the first one and the last. I thought it was. So is it two tribulations or three tribulations? How many is there? No, there's there's two three and a half year periods that right. add up the We're second. We're talking years. about the second one. The second week. Right in the middle is when right Christ. Right in the middle back. of the second week. Okay. Right. The um the I believe the set the seventh trumpet is the rapture of the church. I know, and I know. That, ha that happens right after the Antichrist sets himself up as God. Right. Now, now, now. So we got all of this. Christ comes back in the middle of, of the last uh, three great tribulations, all that. When Christ comes I, back, that's the millennial I, I don't, he, Is that he the millennial says, reign? He, he says I'm, when... I'm not going when, Daniel. I'm... I'm 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 ready to go, so I'm kind of gonna be direct. Yeah, I get it. So is is that the millennial reign when Christ comes back? It's really it starts at the end of the week. At the at end the, of the at, week, so, I believe. So that last, the third week of the Great Tribulation <laughs> is the millennial no, reign. At the end of the seven-year period as a whole is a week. Okay. Seven so years. Is of is one week. When's the what? millennial reign of Christ? Sometime between, um, so, sometime between the church getting raptured and the end of the tribulation. So when does the temple get destroyed? Right before that. Right before what? Before Christ comes? Oh, well, he comes as lightning and... He no. destroys the Antichrist. No. no. When does yeah. the temple get destroyed? Does it does it happen before Christ or after Christ? Before he comes back? Since it's in the future. It hasn't I, I only I only know I only know dealing with the Antichrist. So you don't I'm not know even sure it's gonna be destroyed. You I'm not even know. sure. If, no, listen, I'm not even sure if that temple gets destroyed until until um then you don't know comes down you don't know then when the temple's going to be destroyed until new jerusalem comes down but we see in daniel 9 the prophecy which christ uh, uh, talks about in matthew 24 of the temple being destroyed but you he don't know the sanctuary, but huh he says the sanctuary right yes, yes that's, the that's the temple so yeah i know but what i'm saying is I don't know what that language. Dan, you Go don't ahead. know. You do not know what Daniel Nine is right. talking about. What, what do you guys think? When, when do you guys think the temple is going to be destroyed? Okay, let's read. Let's, it, it is Daniel nine and twenty six. And the people of the prince that shall come to destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. And until the end of the war, desolations are determined. And he shall confirm, he, talking about this prince here, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and obligation to cease. The only right. way well, it cease, hold on. That's the midpoint. Hold on. No, the only way it cease is if there's no more temple. Because that's what the temple is for, is for sacrificing. That's the, that's what it's for. So, it's for, temple. It's so for sacrifice and ob obligation. So, Daniel, that has to have happened. Because if you're if you're not if you if you're gonna say that hasn't happened yet, that means there's a temple standing right now that we can do sacrifice in. And it also means it also means uh, there. Hold on, Daniel. It means there's no prophecy of the second temple being destroyed. There's no. <laughs> there's no. There, apparently, there's no prophecy because the first temple is destroyed already. Yeah, bro. In Daniel nine, he tells that you that in uh, Luke twenty one that every stone will be cast down. So yeah, there is a prophecy. What, what's your point with this? The, the, the point is, sir, you you are under the doctrine of Christianity, and the Bible does not say that. Because look, this is this is first John 2, and I'm gonna start. How many how many antichrists are yeah, there? how many antichrists are there? There's many. So so which one is destroying the temple? Yes. You just told us that one? there's hold on Dan. You just told us there's one antichrist coming back to yeah, destroy the hey, temple, but hey. there's many. Uh, I'm gonna. Well, that's just a term. The son of perdition. 
All right, hey, man. man look, uh, man. so look, this is what we're gonna do. Hit the hit the email, man. If you want to have another dialogue conversation, we going mm -hmm. on three and a half hours. Um, I'm, I'm yeah, just tired. man. I'm tired, man. I'm I'm gonna keep it real. I'm, I'm gonna have to say that you uh, a lot yeah. of stuff you said. It's not in the Bible. It's just not in the Bible. It's not there, bro. It's, it's we, not there. And that's why we was letting you answer the questions is because you showed that it's not there. As we walked you down. It, 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 almost every almost every point you had to say either you don't know or you end up misspeaking. And anytime uh, we did, you, so, so, you had so, to add something in there. So listen, That's listen, just hit the email. I got you, I got you. But I'm pretty sure you guys you know, didn't even let you guys didn't even we didn't even go through who Jesus died for. Okay, we we definitely, we definitely touched, did that. We, touched a lot uh, of we definitely yeah, went into it. How about this? If you feel like there's more left on the table, hit us back. Hit send the email. Set some up. Right. Sundays is perfect times, right? And we'll just we'll talk about another time. As of right now, I want to respect your time. We've been on here for three hours, twenty-one minutes, and twelve seconds. I want to respect your time. I'm pretty sure you got stuff to do because I got stuff to do. He got stuff to do. It's going on four hours. So hit the hit the email, right? And we're gonna have another dollar. We're gonna have, we're gonna have another bill, right? But as of right now, I think that we you know went through Everything three hours need. worth of scriptures. We we jumped on who Christ died for. We jumped on the law. We jumped on who's these Gentiles. We looked at certain prophecies. We talked about Paul. We 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 went a lot of places to, today in this Bible. Man. I think that's I think that's good. I have a good understanding of what you believe. Hopefully, you got a good understanding of what we believe, man. And obviously, there's points where we just gonna have to agree to disagree on. And there's also points that we do agree on. That came out. That was beautiful. So hit the email. And we we just gonna we gonna we gonna we gonna have another dialogue in the future, Lord willing. All right. Well, hey man. Well, thanks for talking. Mm -hmm. And again, again, I do want to say, uh, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to come and discuss the Bible and the Scriptures. Because a lot of people they they just sell wolf tickets in the comments. They just talk in the comments, video after video after video, but never want. To don't have the the fortitude to come on and actually talk about it. So I do once again appreciate you for doing that. Then I appreciate you. I appreciate. You. I also want to add if you, if you hear anything about some people, it's like please let them know that we can have a cordial conversation. Yeah, I want to ask you that, man. Has this conversation been cordial? I know we both kind of have passion and some zeal, so it has moments where you know tensions might have yeah. been up. But overall, uh, obviously, obviously, there's a certain amount of pa there's a huge amount of passion I have for the Bible and my understanding of it, Definitely. and um, I'm I'm zealous for what I believe and what God's showing me are the things of God. Yeah. So as, as yeah, are we. there's, as there's, are we. there's That's a huge all, amount man. of passion, but I, I appreciate you guys being cordial. And oh, yeah, um, man. I mean, you know, I you know how we. Of, you know, you know, you know how we feel and what we believe, but that doesn't mean, you know what I'm saying, we gotta be an a-hole to you. You know, I'll be yeah. some jerks. You know what I'm saying? We can we can dialogue cordially like men. That's what that's what we do, and that's what I, I hope that you take from this. Like, no, you can have a nice cordial dialogue. You might be passionate on a few subjects, but you can have a nice cordial dialogue, man. I, I think that that's huge, and you guys should just I encourage you to keep doing that. Oh, yeah. Growing that, um, yeah. you know, um, don't be like a person or certain people. Be like God in the way, you know, what I'm saying is basically I've seen some toxic stuff right, right, <laughs> come, come right. out of these kind of dialogues. And that didn't happen here. So that's I'm grateful for that. I, I've been praying a lot up until this point. All right. So, like I said, man, uh, we enjoyed the time. Hit the email, and we'll we'll you know set something up in the future, Lord willing. If you enjoyed the dialogue, all right, Daniel. All right, man. Say, say likewise too. If you guys have have questions or oh yeah, oh yeah, Most need, or like go back to your notes and be like, I don't know what he was talking about. Just ask me, because I studied for who Christ died for. Mm hmm. I wasn't the finer points of eschatology, which is I love. There's some things in there I still don't understand. Right, 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 right. Well, next time, next time, like I said, like I said, you know, just send an email. We gonna we gonna talk about if you want to keep talking about Christ or you want another topic. You know, we love talking about the Bible. Like I said, most people. Don't
don't have the uh the fortitude to get on and actually talk about the Bible. That's why I appreciate you. So just hit the email and we're gonna get something situated. All right. All right, man. All right, man. Well, you 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 enjoy your uh life in this country, all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. All right, bye bye. Oh man. And that's Christianity. That's that's Christianity. And that's man. Christianity, man. All these I got notes. The 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 man double talked so many times throughout the entire dialogue to the point where oh no I I misspoke I misspoke multiple things he doesn't know in right but you wanna then he wants to use the blue letter when it fits his point that's why that's why I was holding to that I'm like so you're but when it don't fit the point it you can't use it oh well you gotta see the the people who put the blue letter they, no man it's either we use it or we don't use it because I I was trying to go off the context of. What I was trying to off. say we ain't got to go in the blue letter, but hey man, Christians. But I'll say this that guy, Daniel, he was sincere. I'll give him that. I'll give him that. As far as Christians go, he was since he didn't hop on and try to make a name of debating the Israelite or hop on trying to, you know, oh, I just cut you or anything like that. To him, he was sincerely having a conversation. He got utterly destroyed in multiple points to the point where he didn't even understand what was going on, what was going on. But he was sincere, man. So, uh, you know, hopefully people get edified, uh, you know, people like smoke with the white man. So hopefully this gets people. I like just, this, I just finally like that. We got to put Christianity on the high seat because we always on the high seat. Yeah, we always got to answer questions. But when it's time, for, that's why I love what you did with Daniel Nunn. Just break you it down. Made, made him break it down. Because whatever we say wrong, this, the, but we did we did the same thing with what Ezekiel thirty six. Yep. we did the same thing with Isaiah sixty one. Every time we got to actually no, let's let's slow it down and let's break it down. Who's the day here? Who Hosea two? We did the same in Hosea two. Yeah. We did it in Hosea two. Everywhere in Hosea two, where it says her or she, he admitted it was Israel until the last verse, and all of a sudden the last verse in the middle of the verse, it changes from being Israel. To Hosea's daughter, come on, man. Or he got to insert. Well, those are the Gentiles that believe. It's anytime somebody says that in Christianity, it's crazy because there's no scripture that says that. One moment in Isaiah 61, it is the multi ethnic church. church. Yeah. Now it's not. Now the Israelites that are come. inherited the Gentiles. Oh my god. And then and then he misspoke. Now it's it's Israel. It is Israel. We are going to inherit. The Israel Gentiles. are going to inherit the Gentiles, but those Gentiles are those that don't believe in Christ. It's the same thing. That's why you got to agree to disagree sometimes. Cause We'll sit there and be talking about the same, you know. Thing. But but that's why we have these these dialogues because obviously we're not about to change his position. Obviously, not. obviously he's not about to change our position, right? But all of this is done for for edification on this Bible, so that all of y'all that's watching, y'all can dissect and y'all can actually see this is the Christian standpoint and this is the Bible standpoint. Every single time we went to the Bible, literally every single time we went to the Bible, and then when I when we asked him, well. Where is this at in the Bible? He says, oh, well, it uses the same language uh, in the New Testament. It's like, but yeah, but the New Testament is quoting what we're reading. In the, old, the New Testament valid, validates the old. He was trying to use the old. Like, I mean, he was trying to use the new as in like, that's the, you ain't got to go to the old. Because mm -hmm. remember, he tried to say that, uh, well, Paul understands, basically he was trying to say that Paul understands more than the prophets. Yep. But he recanted his statement when I asked him that. Because he know that's not true. Bro, I literally got it written down. Yeah. It says Hosea doesn't understand fully. Paul does. So, so Hosea got has the prophecy, or the prophets he got their parts. Prophecy. They have parts. They only know parts. Of, they don't understand the prophecy. And Paul got the full realization. That's Christian. Even though Paul says that he taught nothing other than the, the what the prophets and Moses did teach. That's why we say Paul is their God, bro. You know. But hey, hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully, you know. Everyone was uh was edified. Definitely went way longer than what we were supposed to, about an hour and a half. I want to be done with two hours, but you know what I'm saying? I actually want the thought process of Christianity to be fully on display in the hot seat. And when that happens, each and every single time it fails. It is it is a house built on sand, man. And they don't have a leg to stand on because they don't truly serve the most high and Christ, man. They don't do it. So with that, man, we give all glory, honor, and praise to the Most High God, Yahweh. Do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shah Mashiach. 
were in the cause Jesus Christ was indeed a black man. I say Shalom. Shalom. Right about arms and it's on my side, so car to set, we built to survive. Like don't run out of time, don't run out of time, don't run out of time. Run out of time. Guys to get on my grind, she guys to make up a mind. I gotta pray, cause without God, how could I shine? Stereotype committing a crime. I know the heat, I'm better fall in line. Better get racks up for the dollar crash, cause he always giving the sign. Proverbs to the one woman, yeah, she treat me right, so she always stay on my mind. Start with our feet, you lean the blind. Keeping the law, don't fuck with the swine. Right the bell arms and it's on my side, so car to set, we built to survive. Like these niggas be talking, biblical smoker had a heathen coffin, claiming they know the Bible, but be scoffing, hearing the gospel, leave him in the coffin, living in water just like I'm a dolphin, preaching the word could never be softened, spinning the block, I never be parking, reading the scriptures, you know that I'm stalking, like do what you do, bringing it out with my brother the truth, teaming with friends is a ribbon of blue, stepping on heat is really nothing new, niggas be tripping, I'm tying my shoe, scriptures be cooking like they in stew, catch me at camp, so car the crew, beating the case, nobody can sue, like do 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 do, my brother in danger, you know I'm a shoot. John 15, 13, the truth. The Later truth. my life, I know he would do. Send me be tough, it stuck like some glue. Caught in the sister, she my laboo. Better oh. repent before.